All right, so in this video, I'm looking at um, finding slope. So we did this in class on Wednesday. I just wanted to go through a couple of examples of each type. So sometimes you're asked to find the slope of a line and you're given two points. Sometimes you're asked to find the slope of the line and what you're given is the graph of the line. Okay, and then sometimes you're given the equation of the line. Okay, so let's go through those three things. Trying to find the slope when you're given two points, the graph or the equation of the line. Okay, two points on the line, the graph or the equation of the line. So here's one example of this one. What if you had the points 3, negative 4 and the point negative 5, 8? Okay. All right, so this is one where you're thinking about M being the change in the Y's, in the Y's over the change in the X's. You can get the formula if you want, but you should have the idea that you're going to be subtracting your Y coordinates, putting those on top. So here are my Y coordinates. Remember, your points are an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Okay. So you're going to subtract your y coordinates. It doesn't really matter the order you subtract those in. Just make sure these are both from the y side. And the formula is has that subtraction sign. Okay. And then in the denominator, you subtract the x's. And you make sure that if you started with negative 4 from this point, then you have to do the denominator starting at 3 from that point. So this is 3 minus, but be careful, it's minus a negative 5. So I like to do plenty of examples where you have lots of negatives. All right, so the, the circled minus signs, those are in the formula. So before you proceed, make sure these are y's. Ask yourself that. Are those y coordinates? And then ask yourself if these come from the same point. Okay, because so, that's how you make sure that you've subtracted in the same order. All right, so now on top I see negative 12. On the bottom, 3 minus negative 5 would be 3. That becomes plus 5, which is a positive 8. Then I notice, well, you know, that can be simplified. I can divide top and bottom by 4, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to wind up with negative 3 on top and a 2 on the bottom. So the slope of the line passing through, through those two points is supposed to be a negative 3 halves. Now, a quick way of just seeing if you're approximately right, you know, like a quick, easy check, is just to do a, a um, plotting those two original points. So like 3, negative 4 would be somewhere in that quadrant. Negative 5, 8, that would be somewhere up here. And looking at that, this line should be falling as I look from left to right. So it should have a negative slope. Now, I'm not really checking the number part. I could do a careful graph and use the graph to determine the slope. We're going to show that in a minute in that middle section. Okay. All right. Well, let's do one more of these before we move on. So here's one example. Let's do another example of these. Okay. What if you had the two points 3, 5, and then over here you had negative 7, 5? Okay. And you're asked to find the slope. So you should be thinking, okay, I need to do the change in the y's on top. So 5 minus 5 on top, and then 3 minus negative 7 on the bottom. By the way, up here on this problem right here, those of you who were thinking 8 minus negative 4, and then thinking negative 5 minus 3, you were also correct. All that would happen is you'd have the positive 12 on top, and you'd have the negative 8 on the bottom, but it would still wind up being negative 3 halves. All right, and that's what I was going to comment on here. You could set it up like that and be correct, or you could have your 5 minus 5, and then in the denominator have negative 7 minus 3. Both of those are correct so far, okay? All right, notice on either one of them you get a 0 on top. It's just on one of them you have positive 10, one of them you have a negative 10. But both of those just wind up meaning that the slope, both of these would just be zero, okay? So the slope is really just zero, no matter how you do it, did it, how you set it up. 
Okay. Now let's think about why that was. So the answer to that question would be that the slope is zero. You would put zero in the box. Okay. But here's why that's the case. When you check it, look at how three five would be like here. And then negative seven five would be like there and see how they line up on a horizontal line. And that's like a hiking trail that you can walk on. So the slope is zero. Okay. All right, now what would have happened if the zero had been in the denominator? Do you remember? If you did get a zero in a denominator, that would be the kind that was undefined. But this one exists and the slope is just zero. All right, so there were two problems where you're just getting the slope of the line given two points, okay? All right, so now let's look at this case. What if we're trying to do the slope of the line and we're given the graph? Okay, so let me clear out a little space here. Let me get rid of that what if question. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. After we do the graph, we'll come back and, and do the slope given the equation. Okay. Hmm. Having trouble writing. There we go. Okay, so here's, here's what will happen. So this is example three. So sometimes you're given the picture of the, of the line. You see what it looks like. So for instance, we might have a line that looks something like this. Okay. And so we're trying to get the slope of this line. Pretend it's perfectly straight. That's what I intend for it to be. It's just I have to write in a funny way. Okay. Okay. So we're trying to find the slope of this line right here, okay? All right, so what you'll do is instead of thinking about setting up the formula, you're going to be thinking hopefully about just rise over run. Rise being the vertical change, run being what's going horizontally. So start with a point. I usually start with the leftmost point. Let me change it to blue, okay? And then you count to see, well, how far would you have to go down in order to make your way to this second point? So I'm thinking about how I'd go down one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. By the way, those should all be equally spaced, but they just don't look like it. Okay. So to go from this point to the other one I'm trying to get to, I would start by going six units, six blocks down. Okay. And then do you see how I'd have to go one, two blocks to the right? So that would be a plus two. Okay, make sure you think about whether it's to the right, that would be positive, or to the left, which would be negative. Think about whether this was going in the negative direction or in the positive direction. So the answer to the question would be negative six over positive two, which reduces to be negative three. That would be the slope of the line. Okay, so take advantage of the graph. And if you can, just count to figure out what the slope would be. All right, let's do another one of those. Okay, so what if you had this, this picture? All right, so let's suppose you put some a scale on here. All right, so let's suppose we have one that's way down here. We have one point that's over here, and here's the line. We want the slope of this line. Okay, use the points that they're highlighting because those are the ones that are, are probably hitting at nice integer coordinates. Do not take time trying to label the points, okay, because you might label them wrong and then it just increases the chance that you'll make an error. Instead, take advantage of it. It does help to look at where you're at. So here, see how you're one, two, three, four, five units down. So like when I'm trying to count how far I'd have to go up to get to here, because I'm still going to be thinking about my slope being rise over run, I'm going to start with that leftmost point. I'm going to say, okay, well, I'd have to go up to here, okay, which would be five. Then I'd have to continue three more. Do you see that? This part right here would be five units. And then I can see I'd have to go one, two, three more blocks. Okay, so sometimes if I have a long way to go, I kind of count to the x-axis and then I keep going. So see how that meant I went up a total of eight? That would be the rise. 
Okay. And then when I go over to the right, I'm trying to have that point be over here a little bit. Okay. Over two. All right. See how you'd have to go over three and then two more. So sometimes I think about it in pieces like that. And then that means altogether, I went to the right five units. So I went up eight to the right five. That winds up being eight fifths and it doesn't get any better than that. That's what I would put in as my slope. Okay. All right. So that's what you should do when you're given the graph of the line. You should count. You shouldn't try to identify the ordered pairs and then plug into the formula. You should just take advantage of the fact they gave you the graph. You'll make fewer mistakes if you were to do that. All right. Let's look at one more of those because sometimes you're given a special case. Like what if you had the line and it was over here. This is the y-axis and the x-axis. And this is the line they want you to, to do the slope of. Okay. Well, what you should think there is, wait, this is like a hiking path. I could tell here that, that this should have a positive slope because I'm walking up. This one, I can't even walk up it. So you should think the slope is undefined. It doesn't exist. It's undefined. Okay. All right. Now. Let's go look at the, a couple of examples of situations where they, they start out by giving you the equation of the line, okay? So this would be four or five. This would be example six. All right, so sometimes they give you an equation of the line that's already in that form we talked about, okay? This line right here is in the form called the slope-intercept form. Let me move this up a little bit so I can write that. All right, so this one is in the slope-intercept form. That's what it's called, slope-intercept form. Okay, and if it is, then you have no work to do. You just have to know that the coefficient of x is your slope and that the other number is your b-value, okay? And the b-value turns out to be the y-intercept. So m is negative 2 b is 1. That's your slope. And this right here is the y-intercept. It's where it crosses on the y-axis. And so if the question said find slope, then your answer would be negative 2. And there's no, no algebraic work you have to do. Okay. And then sometimes you get an equation and that it, it might look like this, 3x minus 5y equals, say, 10, okay? That's a different form, okay? That's not the slope-intercept form. I think they call that the standard form. So that's ax plus by equaling c, some number times x plus some number times y equaling c, okay? That's just the standard form, okay? When they're like that, the slope is not obvious. You can't just look at it and say the slope is 3, okay? It's not just the coefficient of x right now. So what you do is you transform this equation so that it, it's in y equals mx plus b form. In other words, you solve this equation for the y so that it'll look like number 6, Okay, so what we're expecting is we're going to take that and we're going to make it look like something like this, and then we'll pull the M out. Okay, all right, so here's why chapter two was so important because that's what you need here is that skill from chapter two. I'm trying to solve for Y, so I'm going to subtract 3X from both sides. I did it so that would go away. Notice the negative in front of the 5Y is not gone. And then 10 and negative 3x, this is way back from chapter 1, you should not be tempted to say that's 7x because those are not like terms. That'll be negative 3x plus 10. All right, now at this point, we're going to divide by negative 5. we got to do that everywhere. Okay. All right, now when we do, we're going to have the y. Here we're going to have the negative 3 divided by a negative. Negative divided by a negative would be positive. But there's no way to simplify that anymore. So you have 3 fifths x. 10 divided by a negative 5 would be negative 2. So I just rearranged the original equation from standard form to slope-intercept form. And I did it because there's my slope.
Okay, so that's M. And that's all they wanted on that problem. Okay, so the slope would be three-fifths. All right, now what if they gave you an equation and it looks something like this? It might give you one. They might say y equals 7, okay? The slope is not 7. This, it's hard to look at that and see what the slope is because you don't even see the x variable. So if you're working within the context of lines, remember the way to think about what that's saying? It's saying you're the line and all of your y coordinates are seven. And so if you wanted to visualize that, if you had a whole bunch of points and every time their y coordinate was seven, then wherever seven is on the y, you'd always go up seven no matter where you were on the x. So y equals seven turns out to be this line right here. And this horizontal line would have a slope of zero. Okay. Okay, so the slope would be zero. And that would be one way to figure that out. Okay. What happened to the x variable on that in reality was there was a zero as the coefficient. See, if you thought about it in slope intercept form, you could think of y equals 7 as y equals 0x plus 7. But then that would just be 0, so you didn't have to have it. Okay. All right, so that gets at just finding slope, whether you're giving, given, let me squeeze this down so you can see it. Whether you're given two points, whether you're given the graph of the line, so you're just counting your slope, or whether you're given an equation to have to rearrange it. All right, one more thing I want to do in this video is the whole reason we really like the slope-intercept form. What if you wanted to graph using the slope? Okay, so instead of just graphing by plotting points, you want to graph using the slope. If you were given this problem, what you would do is you would identify the M and the B. All right. And then I told you to think about it like this. B is where you begin, and M is how you move. And the B value is always the Y-intercept, right? So this is your slope, and this is your Y-intercept, where it crosses the Y-axis, okay? So if I'm trying to graph this, let me get a, a few tick marks on here. Okay, the one, I would begin with the B, I would put the one on the Y axis always, and then I'm going to move according to the slope being negative 2, but I need it to be a fraction. So I'm going to slip a 1 underneath it so that I can think about rise over run. So if I think about it as rise over run, doesn't that mean to go down 2? And the 1 means to go to the right 1. So from there, I'm going to go down 2 to the right 1. Do both of those before you locate that new point. And there you have it. There would be the graph of that line. Okay. So that's the B. And then going down 2 and to the right 1 is just how I use the slope as the directions telling me how to get to another point. Okay. All right, so if we're trying to graph a line and it's in slope intercept form take advantage of that and even if they didn't ask you to it's great to just graph by using the slope all right and then i wanted to look at one more that one that we had that was 3x minus 5y equaling 10. if they really left it up to me i might use intercepts or just plotting general points on one like this but if they asked me to graph using the slope then I would take time to do like we did, and I would subtract the 3x. I would divide by the negative 5 everywhere. I'm really dividing once on the left and once on the right, but it's just getting distributed into both of those. And I'll have y equals 3 fifths x minus 2. So take time to get it in slope-intercept form. Then you've got your slope, and you've got your b value. So now you're ready to graph it. Okay. So let me get a coordinate plane. You get some tick marks on there. They should be equally spaced, not messy like that. Let me try that again. OK, 
okay? And you begin with the B value, negative two on the Y axis. The three fifths, you should be thinking up three, right five. So let me do it in blue so you can see it. So I'm gonna go up one, two, three units. So that's one, two, three units up. Then I gotta go to the right, one, two, three, four, five units. That gets me to here, so go to the right. From there, one, two, three, four, five. Gets me right there, okay? So up three to the right five, and that gets me to the second point, and then I'm gonna connect those. And that's the graph for the original problem. I just rearranged it to put it in slope intercept form so that I could take advantage of this and begin at negative two and use the slope to tell me how to move. So that's what we did about uh, slope. Okay, so let me stop sharing this and getting that posted for you to help you with your homework.